This is a nifty little demonstration of three of the powerful aspects of the variable section sweep. Multiple trajectories, writing relations using TragePar, and also datum graphs. And I'm starting off with a model that already contains five datum curves. And that's just to save a little bit of time in the demonstration, just to show you the nature of these curves. So I'm going to edit definition of the one in the center. And this is just a straight line with a length of 140. And for the other curves, it also has a horizontal length of 140, uh, but just has basically a couple lines and a couple of arcs in it. And I'm going to, and the same curve is repeated 90 degrees around the main curve. And so for creating a variable section sweep, you access it from the sweep tool. A few versions ago, the simple sweep and the variable section sweep were combined into the same interface. And I'm going to expand the references tab. And here's where you can select the trajectories that you want to use. And I'll select the straight line trajectory. And that's going to be my primary trajectory. To select additional trajectories, I'm going to use the control key and pick the other four curves. And by selecting multiple trajectories, it automatically changed the option to be a variable sweep as opposed to being a constant section. To make the section, I'm going to click on the Edit or Create Section button in the dashboard. And now it'll help if I change to the sketch view where I'm looking normal at my sketch plane. And what you can see here are those little X's that you see around uh, the corners in the center, those are the references for the sketch trajectory. And so when I create my sketch, if I lock into those references, my sketch will ride along those trajectories as it's created. And I'm just going to use the center rectangle and allow, oops, let's try that again. There we go, let it snap into both. Clicked a little too early. And so I've created this uh, square essentially here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put fillets on the corners. And I see that I ended up with a weak dimension. I'll address that in a moment. And I want all these fillets to have the same radius. So I'm going to use the equal constraint and just pick them. So now all the fillets are driven by the same value. And it looks like one of my entities is no longer locked into the reference of the trajectory. No problem, I'll use the coincident constraint. Let me take a guess that it's this one. Oh, the weak dimension went away, so that took care of it. All right, and let's change the value of the dimension for that radius. So now when I hit the check mark, and rotate the model, you can see how the rectangle or square that I sketched is following along those trajectories since I locked the sketch into those references. So that's, you know, pretty good. Now I'm going to really ramp up uh, the power of the variable section sweep. I'm going to use a datum graph to drive the size of that radius. So let's hit the check mark. And since I want to use the datum graph in the feature, uh, it needs to exist before the sweep. So I'm going to use insert mode. Just drag the insert here arrow up above the sweep so that the sweep ends up being suppressed. And now I can create my datum graph. And most people probably aren't familiar with the datum graph feature, but this one is pretty neat. So I'll go to the datum overflow menu. And here we have the graph command. I get prompted to give a name to the graph, and I'm just going to accept the default name of it, graph underscore one. And this puts me into sketch mode. And so a datum graph, like it sounds, is you're going to create a graph. You're going to sketch out a function. And this is very convenient because a lot of times with relations, you might not be able to express explicitly the function that you want to use. And one thing that is required in the datum graph is a coordinate system uh, 
center lines aren't required, but they're really helpful to use as your X and Y axes. And then you would just sketch the shape that you want. So for example, I could sketch a spline over here, whatever shape. But uh, I have something a little more complex that I want to use. So let me undo a few of those different steps. And also to save time and effort, I'm going to bring in a pre-existing .sec file. And I can get to that from the file system command. And here is that sketch that was saved out. And I'll just drop it on the screen here. From the dashboard, I'm going to change the scaling to 1. And let's zoom out. And so here is this datum graph. So again, there's a bunch of lines, some arcs. Maybe there's some splines in here. And you see the different dimensions. Now, you might recall that the original main trajectory had a length of 140 and this sketch has a length of 140 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these values on the graph to drive the size of those corner radii in the bottle one thing that's typically done with datum graphs is you make it basically rectangular you know make, make, make it sort of square so it's easy to read what I mean by that is that these values in the vertical direction have been scaled by a factor of five just to make the graph easier to read. Now I'm going to have to remember that later on, that scaling factor of five, when I go to create my relation. So let's hit the check mark over here. My datum graph is in the model. Now I can exit insert mode. Yes, I will resume that bottle feature. And let's edit definition and get back into Sketcher using the button on the dashboard. And so what I want to do is I want to drive the size of this radius by that graph. And so to do that, I'm going to go to the Tools tab and click on Relations. And you'll notice that that dimension, which had a value of 8, automatically gets toggled from its numeric form to the symbolic form. To write the relation, I'm going to click on the dimension and then click in the main relations editor dialog box. And I'm going to say that this dimension, which has the name SD7, is going to be equal to, and I'm going to use a function called evalgraph. And like the name implies, this is going to evaluate a graph. And so the first argument that you're going to pass to the eval graph function is the name of the graph. And again, I went with the default name graph underscore one. You're going to put that in quotation marks. Then I'll put a comma. The next value that you're going to pass to the eval graph function is tragpar. And tragpar, T-R-A-J-P-A-R, is short for trajectory parameter. And the way that tragpar works is that at the beginning of your main trajectory, tragpar has a value of 0. At the end of the main trajectory, it has a value of 1. And so you can use that for writing your different functions. Now again, I'm pulling values off of a graph. The entire length of this bottle is 140, so I'm going to have to multiply tragpar times 140. All right, and those are the two arguments that you pass to the eval graph function. Now remember when I was creating the datum graph, I mentioned that the graph was scaled uh, for the y values by a factor of 5. Since the graph was scaled by a factor of 5, I'm going to need to divide by a factor of 5 over here. So just something to be aware of. All right, I can click on the Verify Relations button, and yep, everything is good. I didn't have any typos. Now I will click OK, and I'm on the Tools tab. This might be a little confusing. There are two other tabs over here. I was in Sketcher, and I'm done in Sketcher. And by the way, the radius had a value of 8. It pulled off a value, I think, at the beginning of the graph a value of 52. 52 divided by 5 is 10.4. That's why you see the value of the radius here at 10.4. All right, I'm finished up in Sketcher. I can hit the green check mark or if I right click 
from the pop-up menu, I can choose check mark. And so now you can see the shape that I get on this bottle. And what's really neat about this, let's hit the check mark to complete the feature. What it does over here is really neat. So the radius is what's being controlled by the graph. And so it's pulling the values off. And so then over here, the radius starts to get really big and it actually drives the width of this feature to zero. So that's one real neat thing about variable section sweeps using Tragpar and EvalGraph and your different functions, you can drive widths of feature to zero, and you really can't do that with a lot of other different features. And so it ends up making the bottle circular around here, and then the size of the radius starts to decrease. And remember, the shape of the sketch is also following the trajectories. And then down at the other end of the bottle, it ends up being circular again because it's following the trajectories and the size of the radius increases to drive the width of that surface to zero again. So that is the variable section sweep. And again, we used multiple trajectories. We used a datum graph and the eval graph function and tragpar. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please check out our website at www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also hit the subscribe button so you can be informed when new videos are released.